If you're shopping for a seven or eight passenger vehicle, you wanna save on fuel, and you wanna be able to put six or seven or eight passengers worth of luggage inside the vehicle with you, you have very few options, and one of them is the Toyota Sienna. This is all new for the 2021 model year and quite different than the Sienna that it replaces because all Siennas in the United States will be hybrid only. In this video, I'll be talking mainly about the pros and cons as I see them for this minivan. If you wanna see my more traditional review format, there's a video on my channel of that. And if you wanna see how this competes head to head against the Honda Odyssey and the Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid, my three favorite minivans in America right now, be sure to check out that video. It's coming up very soon. When it comes to design, the Sienna is definitely the most modern minivan in America right now, at least until we see the Kia Carnival. Now, I haven't been able to drive the Carnival just yet, so keep that in mind as we start talking about this particular minivan. We have full LED headlights standard in all trims, which is definitely a nice touch, but they do change based on the trim level you get, so the fancier models will have fancier headlights, as is pretty logical. Most people that I talked to this week thought that this front end look was more attractive than the one that we find in the Odyssey and in the Chrysler Pacifica. It definitely is a little bit more daring and adventurous with these little silver touches right here and the large grille at the bottom. In this video, when I use the phrase American minivan, I'm talking about a minivan designed for the North American market, not specifically one built in America or by an American company. The Sienna, the Carnival, the Odyssey, and the Pacifica are the three big American minivans here. We do have some alternative minivans. We have the Ford Transit Connect, which is definitely smaller than this. And of course we have the Mercedes Metris, which is a little bit differently shaped than this and rear wheel drive. But interestingly enough, the big four American minivans follow basically the same formula. They're almost exactly the same size. They seat seven or eight passengers and most of them are about the same width across the back. We can really thank Chrysler for that because although Chrysler did not invent the small van, they did really define what was gonna be called the American minivan way back in the 1980s. With this particular same size format that was able to accommodate four by eight sheet goods inside, although that is a little bit tricky in the Sienna as we'll talk about in a little bit. And then of course, a decent amount of cargo area behind the third row. The Odyssey, Sienna, and Pacifica are almost exactly the same length on the outside, and they're all quite square as well. That really leads to increased cargo practicality and increased headroom for the third row. But versus the Chrysler Pacifica, you will notice that this rear hatch hinges a little bit further forward, and we do have a slightly more raked rear glass. That means that third row headroom in this, interestingly enough also in the Odyssey, is a little bit below what we see in the Pacifica. Moving around to the rear, we have combination LED tail lights, we have LED brake lights and parking lights. The turn signals and backup lights are incandescent. You'll notice that this is the all wheel drive model. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Parking sensors down at the bottom and then no bumper overhang. I do think that's a bit of a pity. That means that if you are getting in a minor fender bender, which can happen now and then, you'll notice that this hatch goes really low. It actually opens right about here and the hatch is almost flush with the bumper at the bottom. Obviously, Toyota was interested in maximizing the interior cargo volume, but that does mean perhaps slightly more expensive hatch repairs if you were to say back into a garbage can or back into a pole and it were to crease the tailgate in a way that it wouldn't close. If you're not a fan of four cylinder engines under the hood, you might want to avoid the Sienna because this has the same two and a half liter four cylinder hybrid system that we find in the Highlander. It's a modified version of the same system that we find in the Camry and the RAV4. The engine itself produces 189 horsepower when under this hood and combined with the two motor hybrid system on this side of the engine bay, you get 245 horsepower total. But remember that if you are going up steeper slopes, there will be times where you will only be at 189 horsepower. That's because once the battery is completely depleted, which is a little bit over one kilowatt hour sitting right under the driver and front passenger seats all you have left is the gasoline engine the trade-off for that is absolutely impressive fuel economy if you choose the front wheel drive version you'll get 36 miles per gallon combined if you choose the all-wheel drive version 35 miles per gallon combined in real world driving that means a savings over the honda odyssey of more than a thousand dollars a year at least here in california with our higher gas prices even if you live somewhere where gasoline is two dollars and fifty cents for instance you'll still be saving about a thousand dollars a year when we talk about the all-wheel drive Sienna, there is one thing you should know. This uses the same e-all-wheel drive system that we find in the RAV4 and the Highlander, rather than a mechanical all-wheel drive system like we do find in the current generation Chrysler Pacifica or the previous generation Toyota Sienna. So if you'd rather have a mechanical all-wheel drive system that will send nearly 100% of engine power to the rear wheels whenever the front wheels have no traction, you might want to get a mechanical all-wheel drive system. If on the other hand, you're just looking for the vehicle to be a little bit more sure-footed in snow, and you're worried about perhaps some of those slicker situations, but you don't worry about necessarily getting stuck with zero traction, then this system should be just fine. E all wheel drive systems do feel a little bit different out on the road. So if you live in an area that gets an awful lot of snow, you may want to talk to a friend or a relative that has one of Toyota's e all wheel drive systems to ask them their opinion on that system and how it behaves in your local area. 
I might have been a little bit dismissive about this feature when I first mentioned it, but one of the things that I came to really love about the Sienna is the foot-operated door controller on either side of the minivan. Very much like we see in crossovers and SUVs, you can waggle your foot right here under the little logo on that sill and then open the sliding door. This is really, really handy if you're carrying objects and you just want to open the door without fiddling with the remote. As you expect, the Sienna also has this feature on the back, right there for the rear hatch. And then once the rear hatch is opened, one thing that I've noticed actually that's a little bit more convenient in the Pacifica is the location of this hatch close button. If you have kids that are reaching for the button, putting it over here on the side does make it a little bit closer to the ground, a little bit more easy for them to reach versus up here on the hatch. You of course can close the hatch with the remote. So if I have the remote right here, I can just press and hold the button and close the rear hatch. And you can close it from the controls on the inside. Since we're back here, let's talk about the cargo area. We do have a third row seat that folds into the floor. We just pull this handle right here, pull this back, and then it flops down there into the floor. Now, due to this design and the way the seat is hinged, I did find it a little bit more difficult to do this one-handed versus some of the competition. And you'll notice that we have these really big hinges down here. Those do impact the cargo area. I was able to fit the same number of bags in this and in the Odyssey and in the Pacifica. However, they didn't fit quite as well because of the way those hinges protrude into the cargo area. And I did have to close the hatch myself. It would not close electrically. A really great touchback here is this 1500 watt inverter port. Not only can you run things like game consoles or DVD players in the vehicle, laptop, computers, etc., you can also run a microwave or a refrigerator off this. And Toyota gives you not one, but two AC outlets. So there's one in the center console here and one back there in the cargo area. Both support a combined total of 1500 watts. Now let's talk about seats because there are definitely a few pros and cons going on here in the Sienna. If you want eight passengers in your Sienna, you have the choice of only two different trim levels, the base two trim levels in the lineup. And if you want all-wheel drive, your selections are even further limited. We see basically the same thing in the Chrysler Pacifica, but in the Honda Odyssey, you can get the top-end Elite trim with an eighth seat right here in the middle. It is removable, so you can have the captain's chair vibe that we have going on here, or you can put it in to carry eight passengers. I think that is the handiest thing. Now, these seats do have a really eccentric slide. If I can find that slide motion there, you can see they slide all the way to there and then all the way actually further back than would normally be allowed with that third row seat in that position. You can actually pop that up and then go even further back. That's because if you get the top end version of the Sienna, then we have some really comfortable second row seats with ottomans. You can really put your feet up quite nicely. Now on the downside, because of the way these seats move and the fact that they don't come out, we'll cover that in a little bit, we have tracks that go almost all the way up to the first row seats right there. And that means that things could get in those tracks, you know, rocks, stones, pebbles, Cheerios for my shoes, etc. They could all get trapped in those tracks and make sliding the seat a little bit of a crunchy affair and something extra that you have to clean. Now let's talk about the seats themselves. These second row seats employ side impact airbags integrated into the seat side itself. They also have the seat belt located right there into the seat. That's because of how eccentric the travel on the seat is. They couldn't just put the seat belt right there on the B pillar. These seats do not come out of the vehicle. Now I know I've talked to some people that said, oh, but I've seen a YouTube video and you can unscrew them and take them out of the vehicle. Remember that we're dealing with airbags here. So it is absolutely not recommended by Toyota for you to unbolt a seat and disconnect the airbag connectors, et cetera, get an airbag error on the instrument cluster there. Absolutely positively not recommended. Most people should just leave these in place. Now, in order to improve cargo capacity, they do flip like that and slide forward, but you'll notice that they don't come out completely. And we have about two feet of seat still in the vehicle. So although you could put four foot wide items in here, only a six foot long item will fit in here and close that rear hatch. So no four by eight sheets of foam board or plywood or art supplies for the kids, etc. That is something that you could do in the Odyssey and Pacifica and most likely the Carnival as well because its seats now finally come out. But the Sienna has traded places and these seats don't. On the subject of seats, it's worth noting that the front passenger seat does not have the same range of motion as the driver's seat. That's very similar to what we see in the Honda Odyssey. This is lacking the four-way adjustable lumbar support or the ability to change the tilt of the seat bottom cushion. It's also worth noting that the second row seats don't move in a manner that would allow you to leave a child seat latched into place and still easily access the third row. Although obviously, as you can see, you could definitely slide them forward and backward to make ingress and egress a little bit easier. 
Now I'm gonna grab the camera and let's go for a bumpy ride taking a look at all the storage cubbies in the Sienna because the Sienna really excels when it comes to sticking things in places assigned for them. So we have tons of bottle holders down there in the front doors, another knickknack holder right there, and then a really innovative, very long stretch of cargo area right here in the dashboard. You can see I can stick smartphones right there, other knickknacks right across there. There's also a little lip over here to keep those things from rolling around. And there's another knickknack area over there on the driver's side. We have two large cup holders here, two smaller cup holders. Now, unfortunately, neither of these were able to accommodate a large hydro flask that I had in the vehicle. The Qi wireless charger is right there where it's very easy to access. And then we have this enormous storage area right there under the center console. We see the same concept in other vehicles, but this one is large enough that people will actually use it. One thing that I've noticed is that if these underfloor or under console storage areas are not large enough and easily accessible enough, nobody ever puts a bag in there. But this is large enough that you might be able to put a purse, even a small diaper bag inside. We have two fixed armrests, a huge center console. This is one of the deepest here. It would easily accommodate a gallon of milk. I definitely tried that. And then we have a bag hook behind if you'd rather hook your purse or your bag on the back of the console. There's the hook looking at the rear section of that center console. Again, that power outlet down there, the HDMI input, two cup holders. If we move on over to the sliding doors, we find bottle holders there and some knickknack holders right there at the side. Some additional bottle holders that move with the seat with little webbing right there. If you're looking for a large pano moonroof, you might need to look somewhere else, just a standard sized one over the driver and front passenger. In the ceiling, we find one of the Sienna's unique features, and that is a four zone climate control system. Three zone is an awful lot more common with minivans. You find three zone climate in the Pacifica and the Odyssey, but this is the only one to give us four zone climate control. Now it is worth noting that these controls are not lockable from the front. So the kids are always free to play with the buttons as long as they can reach them. We have a single screen for the rear seat entertainment system. I do wish this had a two screen setup like we find in some of the crossovers and SUVs out there. This one basically just plays DVDs. Moving to the third row, we find some additional cup holders, the same cup holders on each side, but on the passenger side of the vehicle, we find USB ports. So USB-C and a regular USB charge only port. We have headphone jacks on either side. Moving back to the front of the Sienna, we have the same sort of storage areas on the driver's door. And again, that little shelf over there to the left of the steering wheel. The steering wheel itself is basically the same as the one that we find in a wide variety of different Toyota models. We also have the familiar seven inch LCD right there in the middle of two physical dials on the instrument cluster and a familiar Toyota LCD infotainment system. This is a nine inch LCD. And I do think that's a bit of a pity because clearly this dashboard could have supported the really humongous LCD that we find in the Highlander, but that's not an option even in the top end trims of Sienna. Well, we're on the subject of LCD is this screen is not as high resolution as the one that we find in the Pacifica. And for some reason, a 360 degree camera is only available on the top end trim of Sienna. So all the rest of the versions just get a simple backup camera. That means that parking in this vehicle is gonna be an awful lot more tricky because many vans are quite wide and some of those smaller parking spots and strip malls or older parking areas definitely can be a little bit tricky to park in. Rather unfortunately, due to a camera error, I managed to lose a bit of footage for this review. So let's dive into the numbers for the Sienna. Zero to 60 happened in 8.4 seconds. That easily makes this the slowest minivan in North America right now. The average minivan will do zero to 60 somewhere between seven and 7.4 seconds, depending on the model that you get. Even the other hybrid in this segment, the Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid, even though it's quite heavy, it will still go zero to 60 pretty fast. On the other hand, 8.4 seconds isn't necessarily that bad. It's actually pretty similar to a wide variety of compact crossovers like the Nissan Rogue. And because the engine and motor together produce a reasonable amount of torque, when you load it up with six people, it doesn't feel out of breath like some people might assume. So I'm actually okay with the zero to 60 time on the Sienna. But if you want something that's faster and you're really concerned about uphill pulling, say if you had four or five people and you were trying to pull a small trailer on the back, definitely keep in mind that this is going to be slower than some of the competition. Also a little bit different than some of the competition is the stopping distance. In my testing, the Sienna took 135 feet to stop from 60 miles an hour back to zero. Oddly enough, that was a little bit longer than the heavier Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid and about 10 feet longer than the average minivan in this segment. It's possible that the stopping distance is related to the tires that Toyota chose to put on the Sienna. They could be a little bit less grippy than some of the competition. It also could have to do with the way that Toyota's regenerative braking system works. Because in some of Toyota's vehicles with regenerative braking in their hybrid models, you will see slightly longer stopping distances than other comparable hybrids. So Camry versus Accord, etc. When it comes to handling, the Sienna does pretty well for itself. Even though this is a little bit heavier than some of the competition, the weight is well located. The battery pack is under the driver and front passenger seat 
seats, not under the engine compartment. Under the engine compartment, we just have the two electric motors and the four cylinder engine. If you choose all wheel drive, that motor happens in the back. That gives the Sienna a relatively decent weight balance, even when it's empty. Of course, weight balance in a minivan is not a huge thing because by the time you've loaded six or seven people in it, exactly where the other components in the vehicle become relatively less important. And logically, handling is a little bit less important in something like a very family-focused vehicle like this than obviously a sports car. But in general terms, the Highlander Hybrid is not going to handle any better than the Sienna Hybrid. In fact, the Sienna has a lower center of gravity and it's going to feel, in general terms, a little bit more planted, a little bit more stable than the Highlander. There's going to be a little bit less body roll depending on the situation that you're in, simply because the Highlander is higher off the ground. Remember that the Sienna and Highlander are very closely related, and in a wide variety of situations, the Sienna and the Highlander feel very, very similar to one another. The big difference you're going to notice is simply that higher off the ground feeling and then the size of the Sienna. It's a decent amount bigger than the Highlander. As far as handling rankings in this segment go at the moment, I think the Carnival just barely edges out the Odyssey for the win, and I would really put the Sienna and the Chrysler Pacifica very similar to one another, basically on an even playing field, with the exception of the Pacifica Hybrid that is going to fall at the bottom of the list because of the added weight of the battery pack. Ride quality, however, takes a bit of a backseat to the Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid, likely because of the added weight and the extra cushion that you get in most versions of the Pacifica Hybrid. The tires are relatively higher profile compared to some of the better handling options in this segment, and you're certainly going to notice that when it comes to ride quality. But the Sienna is still very focused on quality of the ride, so I'm still going to give this an A. In general terms, the ride quality of a minivan is going to be superior to a decent number of large three-row crossovers, because three-row crossovers are theoretically designed for a little bit of mild off-roading, and so they tend to have slightly firmer suspensions, just differently designed suspensions as well, targeting those more rugged situations. They also tend to have a little bit more performance in mind, even though they're higher off off the ground than something like the Sienna. So as far as ride quality goes, I think the Sienna actually beats the average three row crossover. Cabin noise is well controlled in my 50 mile an hour cabin noise test. I scored 70 decibels, putting this right in line with the rest of the minivan competition. Honestly, most of the minivans in this segment score right around 70 decibels. They're all very, very similar. But one thing that's not similar is the fuel economy. Now, I do have to put a little asterisk here because fuel economy will depend on your driving loop. On my usual fuel economy test loop, I averaged 35 miles per gallon, but on my daily commute to and from the office, and my home, the one that I do every day in vehicles, that number dropped down to 28.5. And that really surprised me because on my daily drive, even when not plugging in the Pacifica Hybrid, it actually managed to get better fuel economy than the Sienna. And I think the reason for that is that going down the hill, I do go up and over a 2200 foot mountain pass, the Pacifica Hybrid was able to regenerate all that energy back into the battery. And then at the bottom of the hill, drive for about three miles in electric only operation even again without charging it on either end. And that bigger battery pack can have some benefits in that way. The Sienna, on the other hand, has a relatively small four-cylinder engine. It definitely is revving pretty high to get you up and over that hill, especially if you have some added weight in the vehicle. So depending on exactly what you're doing with the Sienna, you'll notice that fuel economy will either be pretty close to the EPA average, or it could be a little bit below. But any way you slice it, it is significantly better than the Carnival or the Odyssey, because those two vehicles on that same daily commute should fall below their EPA test scores generally. If you live in a very flat area, the Sienna is likely going to be the best option for you in terms of fuel economy. But if you live in a hilly area, you'll notice that the Pacifica will not only be faster up the hill, also have a bit more pulling power because the engine produces more horsepower and more torque once the battery has been depleted, but you will also likely get better fuel economy in addition to that electric range. So it really just depends on your situation. Largely thanks to the new hybrid system, the Sienna starts more expensive than it did in the last generation at $34,460. Now the big thing to know about the Sienna is that if you want the eight passenger version, there are only three configurations where that is available. The base trim with or without all wheel drive and the XLE trim in front wheel drive only. So if you want all wheel drive and you want eight seats, you're gonna have to get the base trim. And if you get all of the options on your very top end model, that will end up at $52,450. One of the most expensive minivans available in the US right now. Thanks to its high fuel economy, this is one of the least expensive to operate three row vehicles in the United States that does not have a plug. And that does not have a plug thing is important to keep in mind because our first competitor, 
does have a plug. It's the Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid. At $39,995, it may seem more expensive than the Sienna, but if you qualify for the full federal tax credit, it will end up being less expensive. Now definitely keep in mind, you have to qualify for that tax credit, meaning you have to have at least $7,500 of federal tax liability in order to get that maximum incentive. If you don't pay much in federal taxes, then you're not gonna get much of a benefit for getting the plug-in model. Now, if you have access to a plug to be able to plug your plug-in hybrid in, then operating the Pacifica Hybrid is going to be less expensive because generally speaking, driving 30 miles on electricity, most areas of the country, that's gonna be less expensive than driving 30 miles on gasoline. Also, depending on your terrain, you may or may not get better fuel economy in the Pacifica or in the Sienna. This is something that a number of folks that I know in the industry who are reviewing the Pacifica Hybrid and the Sienna Hybrid back-to-back -back have noticed. If you load the vehicles up and you're driving in a hilly area, then the Pacifica may actually get better fuel economy than the Sienna. But if you drive them gently, especially if you're out on open highway, then the Sienna is gonna be more efficient thanks to its four-cylinder engine. However, any way you slice it, the Pacifica is going to be faster. Whether we're talking about the hybrid model or the non-hybrid model, the Sienna is actually quite slow in this segment. It's about a full second and a half faster than something like the Honda Odyssey or the base version of the Pacifica or the new Kia Carnival. On the other hand, if you want high fuel economy and all-wheel drive, the Sienna is the only stop in town because all-wheel drive is not an option on the Pacifica Hybrid. Some of the Pacifica's benefits get negated when you get the hybrid option. We no longer have second row stow and go seats. They no longer fold flat into the floor. That's because that is where the battery lives. The battery is considerably larger in the Pacifica than it is in the Sienna, so it couldn't just live under the front seats like we find in the Toyota minivan. That means that one of the practical touches in most Pacifica models is not available in the hybrid, and that is the second row seats that allow a child seat to remain latch anchored into place and still tilt and slide forward for easier access to the third row. That means that as far as the playing field goes, these two vehicles are actually on pretty level footing. Both of them have second row seats that move in more or less the same manner. With one exception, the seats in the Pacifica come out if you get the hybrid model, and they always stay in in the Sienna. If you're like the minivan owners in my family, the seats not coming out of the second row could be a problem because some folks never take the seats out of their minivan and some people seem to live with them out most of the time. If you're the kind of person that's looking for a minivan for cargo hauling primarily, passenger hauling secondarily, definitely keep that in mind with the Sienna. You get a severe loss in practicality for not having those second row seats come out. On the other hand, we do get side impact airbags that stay with the second row passenger seats as they move forward and backward and recline, and that could yield better safety numbers. We don't have exact details just yet. It is worth noting that most of the minivans available in America crash test pretty similarly, whether we're talking about the NHTSA measurements or the IAHS tests. Since these are the only two hybrid minivans available in America right now, let's move on to the non-hybrid options. Obviously, the first one has to be the Honda Odyssey. This is, generally speaking, the best or second best-selling minivan in America. The Odyssey does really well when it comes to minivan practicality. I love the fact that they have the open center console. Rather than having the bridge like we find in the Pacifica or in the Sienna, it's just open there, so you can more easily put your bag right there between the seats if you want to. On the other hand, it doesn't have quite as many convenient storage cubbies going on in the front as we find in the Sienna. And the way that Toyota has designed the center console and that bridge area, they've put it really high, and that means that you get a lot of room underneath it and a huge center console storage area. The big win, of course, for the Sienna is fuel economy. That should save the average driver that drives 15,000 miles a year $1,000 versus the Odyssey. And if you're the kind of person that spends a lot of time in stop and go or slow and go traffic, or you're simply doing the school run on city streets, then your savings will likely be even larger because city fuel economy is considerably higher in the Sienna, thanks to its hybrid system, than in the Odyssey with its more traditional V6 and 10-speed automatic transmission. Reliability hasn't exactly been the Odyssey's forte over the last few years. Some folks have asked me about this specifically with minivans. The Odyssey and Pacifica are rated very similarly to one another. And then according to most reports out there, consumer reports, etc., the Sienna tends to be about one step higher than that. But the new Sienna has a new hybrid system, and that hybrid system has been incredibly reliable because it is very, very simple. So keep that in mind. Even though it does have a four-cylinder engine, and it is going to be slower, and that four-cylinder may be working a little bit harder, the system itself is pretty simple, so likely reliability and long-term maintenance costs are going to be a little bit lower. The big win for the Odyssey is that you can get an eighth seat in every version of the Odyssey, and that really makes it unique in the U.S. With any of the other alternatives, when you work your way up to the top end trim, the eighth seat disappears. But in the Odyssey, we always have a separately removable center seat in the second row. 
The downside to Honda's particular design is that the outboard seats that do come out are pretty heavy. They're nearly 70 pounds. They're about eight pounds heavier than the seats that we find in the Pacifica Hybrid. And the reason for that is that the shoulder belts are part of the seat design rather than part of the vehicle. So that added weight does have to get removed. The other problem is the magic seat design in the Odyssey. The way those seats move around, there's a separate sort of carousel that stays in the vehicle and the seat latches to that carousel rather than coming completely out of the vehicle. And that means that you are left with say a two inch hump in the vehicle. And if you're putting larger sheets of things in there, definitely keep that in mind. That can be a bit of a bear. Next up, we have the newest minivan in America, the new Kia Carnival. This replaces the Sedona. In other world markets, the Sedona had always been called a Carnival. For some reason, in this generation, they decided to call them all the same, even though Carnival doesn't exactly sound great to the American ear. Naming scheme aside, however, the Carnival is an excellent minivan, as long as you're not looking for a hybrid. Fuel economy is essentially the same as the Odyssey. On the other hand, the Carnival gives us the most horsepower in this segment, the most SUV-looking minivan in this segment, and the most ground clearance as well, nearly seven inches. If you're concerned about clearing taller obstacles, whether or not you want all-wheel drive, the Carnival is going to be the highest. It's actually about two and a half inches higher than the Honda Odyssey. Kia offers an eight passenger version in all trims except for the very top end trim. Now, if you are looking at top end trims, this is an area where the Carnival and the Sienna are actually quite alike because these are the only two minivans in this segment to offer a very top end seating package where the rear seats, the second row seats, have an ottoman. But Kia takes things to a new and interesting level because not only do we have ottomans in the middle seats and re really reclining seats in the second row, they're actually powered in the Carnival as well, as well as heated and ventilated in the United States. If you're watching this video outside the US, that's probably not a surprise because there are a decent number of minivans worldwide with really luxurious accommodations inside. But in the US, if you want the most comfortable minivans, it's probably gonna be the Sienna and this new Kia Carnival. The last thing to know about the Carnival is that it has an enormous cargo area. Kia managed to put a 40 cubic foot cargo area back there, making it about 33% larger than most of the other minivans. And you will really notice the difference. To put six bags in the back of the Sienna, I had to help the hatch close. But in the Carnival, I was able to put eight 24 inch roller bags. So if you wanna be able to carry seven or eight passengers away with a weekend's worth of luggage for all seven or eight passengers, the Carnival is really going to be your only option. The Pacifica, you could put six bags back there and stuff some stuff in the area where the second row would normally go, the stow and go area, but that area is not well designed for roller bags. So if you're interested in carrying more than six roller bags and not using a roof rack or a trailer, that's pretty much gonna be the Carnival. Bottom line for me in this segment is that the Sienna checks all the right boxes, as long as you're okay with the hybrid system and the slower zero to 60 acceleration. Now, if my cash were on the line, I would likely spend the money on the Pacifica Hybrid because it would get a little bit less expensive after the tax credit and you have the ability to plug it in. To be perfectly honest, however, all four minivans that we've talked about today are absolutely excellent options. There's a solid reason to buy the Carnival, even though the fuel economy isn't as high. It has that really big cargo area in the back. If you're looking for, quite simply, the best second row seats outside of a six-figure car, that's definitely going to be it. The Sienna has absolutely excellent fuel economy. You never have to plug it in. And I think it actually has a really handsome look outside. The Chrysler Pacifica is the classic option. You can get a mechanical all-wheel drive system. You can get a V6, the Stone Go second row seats. You can get a plug-in hybrid if that's something that you're interested in, something that I personally would choose myself. And then the Honda Odyssey is sort of the classic alternative with eight passenger seating and even the top end trims. The infotainment system and navigation system and the electronics are a little bit old school in the Odyssey. I do wish it had a bit more of a refresh, but it's still a solid option in the minivan segment and has a really comfortable third row. Be sure and let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section and what would you pick if you were minivan shopping in America right now, especially if you're looking for a lower end or mid-level trim minivan. The luxury minivans are really an interesting novelty, but I'm not clear how many people actually buy them. Be sure and find me over at facebook.com slash alexnado so you can see what I'm driving this week, Instagram, all those other social places, and I'll see you next week.